In this video, we'll be looking at the general form of the cosine function and just reviewing what the values of a, b, c, and d do to the graph as we vary them in the function here. And we'll also be comparing that to the sine function as well. So recall that the value of a in front of my equation here, when varied, has the ability to increase or decrease the amplitude of the function. Right now, with an a value of 1, we'll see we get my base function. So I have a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. If I take that a value and vary it, make it 1.4, then the new amplitude here is 1.4. If I make that 2, you'll notice the new amplitude goes to 2. If I were to make this 0.5, one also new amplitude is 0.5. So whatever the a value is, ends up being the amplitude of my graph. So I'll move this a value back to 1 now. Next, let's look at the value of b. The value of b is located inside the bracket with x minus c for the cosine function and also for the sine function. And what we'll notice is, as we vary b, we're changing how quickly things happen on the graph here. So at a value of 1, we know the base period of the graph for the sine and cosine is 360 degrees. So in other words, it takes 360 degrees before this thing repeats. If I change this to 2, what we notice is that now it only takes 180 degrees to repeat. If I were to change it to 3, it would only take 120 degrees to repeat. And continuing that process, if I go to 4, it only takes 90 degrees to repeat. So what's happening here is when I set values of b like 2, I'm telling the function that I want stuff on the graph to happen twice as fast. So what, I, what we have established here is an inverse relationship between the value of b and the period on the graph. If the value of b is 2, then the period here is 180, or 360 divided by 2. If the b value is 3, then the period here is 120, or 360 divided by 3, and so on. So if we were to make b 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or anything like that, we see we extend the period out because now we're dividing 360 by something less than 1, which is going to give us a larger value. So we'll put that back to 1 now and get back to our base graph. For d, d is added on to the end of our function. If I vary d, we'll see that the graph will shift upwards and downwards. For instance, if I make d negative 1, we'll see that the midline for the original is right here on the x-axis at 0. But if I make d, d, the d value negative 1, then now the, the midline is down here at negative 1. If I make d a positive 1, then the midline shifts up to positive 1, and so on. If we made d 3, your midline would be 3. So d essentially is the equation of the midline. So let's put that back to zero, back to our base graph. Let's look at what the value of c does. So c has the ability to shift our graph left or right, depending on what's happening. So if I make c positive 30, then you'll notice that the graph, for cosine, shifts over 30 degrees. If I make c 60, you notice that the graph shifts over 60 degrees. If I were to make graph, or C, negative 30, then the graph will shift to the left, 30 degrees. So C represents the phase shift. But what we do have is sort of an opposite relationship between the C value in the general form and the C value here. Because if I take a negative 30 and apply it to the graph, it's going to shift to the left. But if I put a negative 30 in for C, I'm going to get two negatives giving me a plus 30 in my equation. So if we see the opposite value in the equation when compared to where the graph is shifting here. The last thing we want to look at is comparing the sine function to the cosine function. So I'm just going to bring the sine function up now. So if we look at the sine function versus the cosine function, we're just going to change the color of the sine function here so we can see the difference between the two. There we go. So the sine function is represented here. And it starts at 0. And our first maximum is here at 90. If I were to shift the cosine function by 90 degrees, we'll see that the two match up perfectly. So any sine or cosine function can be represented as the other by simply taking the graph and having it undergo a shift of 90 degrees, either to the left or to the right. 